Hello everybody and welcome to Room Radio. My name is DJ Nathan and I'm joined with Mod Osborne. Hello, how are you doing? And today we're going to be firing your questions at him uh, all about law. Uh, we've been collecting them for over two weeks now and we're finally here. An hour's worth of uh, Osborne, it's Osborne Live, so uh, we'll jump in uh, with the first question. That's all right, Mod Osborne? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Okay, great. The first question um, is, with the new Six Age, will we see more of the other gods? Well, um, if you've played World Wakes, then you'll probably know that Sarah Doman kind of drops in um, after uh, a certain event happens. Oh, I don't know if I can spoil it. Oh, my. Um, but yes, I, I think that people would be disappointed, I would guess. I think you'd probably be disappointed would you, if there weren't uh, future gods, other gods coming in. Gods who know, some you don't. Um, and that really is our plan. We really want to go with it. Um, it kind of excites me a wee bit. Um, we do want to leave a bit of it as a surprise. Um, how the gods are going to come back in what format like how you're going to interact with them so that I'm going to leave as a surprise but um, you, Armadil, kind of, uh, Bandos all of the biggies even Zaros, they'll be making uh, an appearance in the future Okay, great stuff um, Next question is what was the hardest part of the world way to uh, design law wise anything to bring to mind? Uh, I... The hardest part is probably something that I would also change. It was strange enough, I had another opportunity to go back. I know this is mostly Anna's work, more Anna's work. It did a great job at World Wakes. But um, I, I think I kind of underestimated just how people affiliate with gods. Really kind of, your personality, if you're somebody who sees themselves as virtuous, you go, you're Sarah Diamondist, if you're kind of chaotic and really quite evil, then you might be Zamorakian, and that you're yeah. into conflict and PvP. Um, so it was like giving people options in how to kind of show their affiliation. We kind of limited to Zaros, um, largely kind of Zamorak, but also kind of Saradamin and Guthix, and we kind of limited it that way. I would really like to have done more choices, more options to should display your affiliation. I think that's probably one of the things I would have changed, but it was also the most difficult, because of course you've got to, you've got to give you know, a very game experiences for somebody who's a Guthixian and somebody who's a Saradamin. Yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, I'm interested. Uh, the response to the promise has been generally been good. But, you know, there are people who are, you know, Sarah Dominus who don't feel that they were able to represent that choice in the quest. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to have done more more with that, I reckon. Okay, great. Uh, good stuff. Uh, next question is, how was Gusset is Elder Sword broken? Is it something we'll find out in the future? So this, I'm guessing this is the Sparking Sword at the start, which is, uh, yeah, you come, so. yeah, that's it. You come into the, the chamber in, 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 in Gothic's lair, as it were, and there's that Sparking Broken Sword. Um, people are correct. It's ab- absolutely the sword that was uh, kind of thrust into Skargroth, to, who was the god in the, the memory. And that was part of the way that Guthix got his powers. So how he got broken is something, it's a story that I want to tell in the future. I don't have one, you know, we, we're not actively working on one at the moment. Yeah. But um, that sword got broken through, not through kind of fury or combat or anything like that. It got broken by our other means. And we, we'd like to explore it. I just don't know how we're going to do it in the near future. So many stories to tell. I need to actually, you know, start doing it. <laughs> um, okay, uh, the next question is, um, how soon will we be able to find out how Slisk obtained the fixed stuff or not of Armageddon? Ah, the stuff of, yeah, um, if I have my way very, very, very soon, <laughs> it's, it's in the next, in the next few quests, I would say, is you're going to find this out. Um, I think a lot of people on the forums after the World Wakes were concerned that this was a bit of a retcon, maybe, mm-hmm. that were, um, that we haven't thought about how we got the start of Farmadil. We were changing the existing history. And that's not true at all. We, we absolutely knew that it, um, the start of Farmadil, or at least the shaft of, of it, was with um, the Dragonkin. We, we we'd, um, put that into the post-quest chat of Ritual of Madran. And we're completely allowing for that. That's one of the big revelations that comes in a future piece of story content. We're going to reveal how that happened, what that means for the future story of RuneScape. Um, so that's just going to be exciting, and I'll just leave it at that, I guess. I can keep on talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, great. Um, okay, uh, next question is, are there any Elder Gods on Gilanol physically right now? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, the Elder Gods is, um, again, a topic I'd love to uh, go into in the future. Um, so I don't want to reveal too much, but um, certainly there are Elder Gods that aren't on RuneScape, uh, the Frenesque Creator God, for example, is one that I consider to be an Elder God. Um, he or she is currently not on RuneScape. Um, but 
the notion of these beings, these kind of elemental beings that have created their perfect world, they're happy, they're satisfied, they've created it, and they kind of disappeared. I like the sense of mystery in that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to play on that. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna, we're going to play on that. We'll, we'll do some content that kind of dips into it. We've already done it a little bit with the with the Sa, the Tokar that talk about the old gods, and they'll be revealing a little bit more. Um, we've got some hidden content in there that's going to be, I'm sure people will be finding soon enough in game. Um, I don't know if you've been on the forums and seen a lot of the Gaal chatter, but that was uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. some elder, elder God stuff, um, and a lot of the answers, uh, there'll be some answers given. Okay, wicked. Uh, next question is, apologies if I mispronounce this, it says, what was um, Scargoroth's moral alignment before his demise? Uh, so with the gods, um, we've got a lot of the gods who demand kind of fealty, demand lead, um, that people worship them. You have Saradomen, you have Arm even Armadil, for example, has got the Aviancy, got Bandos demanding fealty from the goblins. There are other gods, I'm, I want to try other subjects, because not all gods will demand worship, and Skargroth is one of those. I, I, obviously he's dead, but he, it's the notion of somebody who's got godlike powers, and just decided that they were very kind of raptor-like, they're a hunter, they just wanted to kill yeah. the, like the, the biggest other things. And, it, and Tusker, who he, who he fought in... Um, in Guthix's homeworld, it's like a huge beast to take down. I mean, this is, you can't get much bigger than Tusker. This is a great, it's, it's great hunt. And so he's likely been following Tusker for a long period of time and has been after her. Yeah. Um, so I see Scargroth as somebody who doesn't demand that they're followed at all. I think that's something I'd like to explore. It's like Tusker, for example, mm. that we've also introduced that Tribute to Guthix goes into a bit more. It's the notion that the people are following her, and she's not even aware. She's a she's a brutish beast. It's the notion. It's the rules of becoming a god. Are really relatively quite simple. That you know, yeah. you have elder god artifacts. You have to have potentially killed a god. It's kind of an and or thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but a mindless beast could have done that. Something like a boar. Something like a, a, a giant creature could have done that. And what happens? A creature like that ascends the godhood. So you've got this kind of symbiotic relationship with the creatures that follow her. And so the different stories that we can tell that are, that are very kind of topically different from gods that demand worship and are looking for power and, and trying to make power in RuneScape. So it's all about telling different stories, but not but not introducing so many gods that people just wake up and they're all over the place like gremlin. And they feel like <laughs> really different. We, want to, we still would like to um, have the existing gods making, you know, being the core gods, as it were. Okay, interesting stuff. Um, another question through is... Uh, Bandos came to Gillenor because of the God Wars. What reason did he have for returning? Well, so after Chosen Commander, he's obviously he's weakened, um, uh, which is now considered a, a fifth age quest. Um, so now we're in the sixth age. Uh, he, that, that, I mean, he's got revenge on his mind for one. Um, he wants to come back and settle some scores. There's also the fact that Bandos has always been a mercenary character. He always follows the money as well as follows the fight. Mm -hmm. So the fact that... Um, Potentially, with a number of gods potentially coming back, however that, that would happen. Um, there's fight, there's a lot of um, artifacts still on RuneScape that could be fought over. Bandos is just right at home. Even though he is weak, I just see him being someone who would absolutely come back. I don't see him as retiring on Yubiusk and just, just sitting there twiddling his thumbs. That's just not Bandos. No. no. <laughs> okay, uh, next question. If that's the answer, uh, have you got names for the seven tiers of godhood? Or is it more of an unofficial scale? <laughs> oh, damn. You know what? I, I printed out the seven tiers of Godhood to kind of... <laughs> but I've got it with me. That's really annoying. Um, <laughs> website. But yeah, they've absolutely got names. So um, I mentioned this in a recent Q&A, if people don't know what the tiers of Godhood are. And it's just a way for me to tell the developers kind of what the parity is in terms of God power. So you, you could probably imagine what God, uh, the tier one is. And people on the forums have got it absolutely right. I mean, tier one is exclusively the elder gods, yeah. um, and um, so that's the title of the tier. There's no, and what that tier can do is different from the other tiers. So tier one, the elder gods, they are able to create life should they want to, and they're also able to create worlds. And that is what really separates them from tier two, which yeah. is when you get into the more kind of gothics, um, Zaros when he was at his full power. Um, these are what I would call um, transcendent gods. Gods on the that, you know, those gods that are potentially moving even to an elder god power base. Yeah, and that's something I'd like to talk about in the future. You know, maybe be press about like, can you become an elder god? 
really tier two, and then we've got other tiers below that. I mean, it, it, there's really no surprise because the people on the forums have really worked this out. It's fantastic. But they work all the way down to eventually tier seven, which I consider to be the um, kind of the reflections or facets of gods. So um, things like Scabarus, things like Crondis, who are parts of a god but not a god themselves. Um, the avatar of Bandos, the Exceeding Chosen Commander, for example. Yeah. yeah. Um, so these are things that that are parts of a god, so have god powers in a sense that they are, you know, they're drawn on god powers. Yeah. So that's really the bottom rung, and I, I think people could probably fill in the gaps, but my aim is to get that on the website, because there's no secret to it. There really doesn't need to be a secret, and I'd like to communicate more with you guys, let you know what we're planning with these with these gods. But there's also some secret gods, obviously, in there that I, I can reveal. Uh, yeah. It's just that we've got some... When we're looking to introduce gods, and we will be looking to introduce new gods, they will always have um, some foundation in the existing storyline. So, for example, um, Tusker, the, it, her followers were those that you saw in the World Wakes, um, you know, these dead beings that you saw in the World Wakes um, flashback. Mm-hmm. So kind of, we're kind of seeding that already, but um, there's some of the gods we're looking to bring in. So, like a, a Fremenic god, for example. Uh, a Karamjan god there, there's already information in game about that and we're just kind of seeding it already and we don't want to feel like we're just kind of you know throwing in gods as I've said before it really ha- is rooted in the existing law mm-hmm. yeah okay uh, sounds great um, next question is if all the gods are ascended mortals will we ever find out more about the species that the major gods other than Zamorak came from uh, yeah absolutely I remember an original pitch that I would have loved to have done but um, is, was, is the notion of god sagas was like um, kind of travelling back into the origin stories of each of these gods playing these gods as they became you know a, they ascended to their godhood through mortality mm-hmm. um, so I would love to have done those but I think <laughs> taking the player away from their character is probably a mistake doing that multiple times mm-hmm. uh, but the we've got a piece of content coming out very soon that isn't actually a quest it's actually just a piece of story content that is other than a quest that talks about kind of the origins a little bit of each of the gods what they've been doing um and absolutely we'll be talking about what those gods were and um what is interesting to me is that certain of these gods will really believe that they weren't ever mortal um for for me uh, saradomin is what is one of those um he he for me, was chronologically probably the first of the yeah. uh, of the younger gods, and it's whether or not he did actually come from a mortal place, um, and we'll hopefully be able to explore that in future content. But um, yeah, that's going to be a focus. Okay, brilliant. Uh, next question is: uh, Is there anything planned for the uh, Karamjan and Fremnit gods? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you use plural, and <laughs> we've really got it. it. It's it's one of each, really. Um, in a sense that uh, there may be others on either side, but um, we've got strong core storylines that are for one of the Kramjan gods. Um, hopefully you'll find out more about that this year. Um, that's that's potential. It may, it may stretch on. Um, but uh, a Fremenic god is also going to be core to one of our future storylines. So yes, absolutely, they'll be coming in. Okay, great. Uh, next question is, what god did the werewolves follow before they were enslaved? <laughs> Um, sometimes with law questions you just don't know (laughs) um with uh the the universe the story bible as it was created i mean it was uh, originally in kind of paul paul gower's head um we've all uh, obviously paul gower's isn't isn't in the team anymore so he's he's written down a lot of what he intended um yeah but there are there are gaps um and for me, sometimes, I mean, we're actually very different from other companies or development companies in terms of the creating content in that the developer is the one who very much leads things. Mm-hmm. That's the story. I mean, I'll create a shell of things that I want to happen. Yeah. But the developer will kind of um, take each story and create the story rather than the designer. And so I kind of left it. We always wanted to do a werewolf spin-off. And the notion of where the werewolves came from and what who they might have supported, for example, pre Zamrak, mm-hmm. uh, I would like to kind of leave to them I don't yeah. feel intrinsic, uh, integral to the sixth age storyline. Um, so that's something I'd very much like to leave to them. But um, yeah, we've always talked about um, the Mauritania quest in that the werewolves and trying to overcome the edicts and getting across the south is a story we'd like to do. But I felt that that was more of a spin-off of the Mauritania storyline rather than core to the whole Drakan, um, Vanistula, Myrek, Myrek yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of storyline. Okay, uh, a bit more of a, uh, kind of a funner one, I guess. It says, uh, which god do you personally follow and why? <laughs> um, 
I'm sure there are uh, players out there who are like this, but I don't necessarily follow a god. I mean, I've got, I kind of admire from afar. <laughs> this right, kind of, okay. Yeah, this notion of um, people. It, there was a live stream a little while back where people asked me what my favourite god was, and I said that my favourite god isn't a god yet. Um, it, it's kind of it. it that that character was Slisk, and there's still some debate. I, I'd like there to be a debate about whether or not he is a god, and that's that's really in t- kind of intentional. Because he's done a few things that have made him potentially a god, but that's going to be a kind of a focus of some story content as well. But um, there's something about Slisk I really like. There's an, an element of both the Joker and the Riddler from Batman in Slisk. That's how I see it, kind of almost the fusion of those. Maybe with a yeah. bit... I think you want to see more of the kind of the Jigsaw... Jigsaw, is it, from Saw? It uh, is, yeah, yeah, Jigsaw. Character. That's it. There's going to be a bit more of him about creating games, putting people into situations that uh, they'll find difficult and very, you know, very compromising. Um, and that's how I see Slisk. He's very interesting to me. Um, and it's hard to mention gods that I like without Zaros. I think Zaros is a stunning character and he's only going to come more into the core. Mm-hmm. Uh, very easy to like those characters that have a lot of mystery attached. The Raptor is another one. Um, because you just don't know and you start filling it with what you expect them to be. Yeah. But Zaros, for me, um, we've, we've worked out what he is, um, what he represents, what he's going to be doing. And it's just so, it's just fantastic. I, I think... Zaros is going to be probably the most colourful character in the entirety of the universe. Um, and Armadil, he's, he's pretty cracking. If you're going to go for a virtuous, I think that Armadil's pretty cool. Um, he's We, we want to move him away from the Quai Baby uh, character. I think you're going to get less of the martyr and more of uh, more strength to him. Right, OK. Hey, uh, sounds good. Um, OK, moving on. The next question is about quests. Um, and it says, when will there be more quests or lore about the elves? Oh, um, oh, I feel so bad about the elves because, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a storyline I love. And um, it, the problem is that I problem is that I probably feel that I need to do it justice and or we need to do it justice because it's the end of a long storyline. There's a lot of anticipation. It's been a long time. Uh, Dennis is sitting there and it just looks like it's waiting to be opened. It's kind of like this big Pandora's box. We need to open it. We need to get in there and find out about it. Yeah. Um, and... When it comes to, I mean, quests are so expensive to produce. Whenever we decide to do a quest, the elves are brought up, and we budget it, and it's and it's expensive. Um, so, I, I mean, what do you do? I mean, the notion of a a, a Zaros quest, say, versus an elf quest, hmm. for example, and then you start. I mean, what do you do? I, I, it's really difficult. And for me, yeah. elf is this something that I would like to do in the next two or three years. I really would like to, and I'd like to do it just like to release for, for dinners. And I think that the Sixth Age, rather than being an obstacle, can be a way of getting us an elf quest out there. Because we have kind of Seren, the notion of what Seren is, or, or what happened to Seren is really interesting to me. Because I've already made it clear that Seren is in the world. She wasn't banished like the other gods. And what she did to stay on the world is quite dramatic. And what that means to her as a character, I mean, there is no mistake. I mean, there's no surprise that she is she's crystalline. And the notion that she might have broken herself into pieces and the elf people are using her in some way yeah as weapons as crystal swords etc that's that's fantastically interesting uh the notion of Prifdinus, you know perhaps having a little part of her um all of this is something i'd like to explore and i'd see the sixth age or whatever we did with the sixth age which i won't reveal too much <laughs> allows us to talk more about the elves through seren so whether or not that is a continuation of the existing storyline or a kind of splinter of the elf story mm-hmm something we, we, we still need to discuss, but um, it's not something that's an active quest that we're developing. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, thanks for the answer. Uh, next question is uh, similar to the elves on, uh, will we be seeing a new quest for the fairy storyline anytime soon, or is uh, that considered complete? Uh, right, so this is probably bad news to some people who like the fairy storyline. Um, certainly, I think we need to consider some storylines to be complete, otherwise we can just get in this kind of loop of wanting more and more. Um, I, I feel that the fairy tale story is done, but I don't feel that the fairies are necessarily done. Um, those who've watched the motion comic, for example, will know that the RuneScape were kind of doing a lot about what the planar, the idea of RuneScape being a planet and Xenaris being a moon nearby, um, and Xenaris being the entry point for most of the races when they came to RuneScape. Yeah. Um, so that interests me. That's a storyline that I'd like to explore. So the fairies are by no means finished, but the fairy tale storyline, just like the kind of the ritual of the Madrat storyline, for example, is finished, but the Madrat will continue. I see the fairies continuing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, great. Uh, um, <laughs> why does the balance elemental in Wild Gothic Sleep talk as though he knows you? 
and you're already dead. Oh, <laughs> this is an. Um, uh, I, I, I've got. I, I've told myself to go and talk to the developer of the content about the balance element when you know what I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I don't actually know the answer to this. Um, it was one of the few quests that I didn't work on at the period. Um, I'd be intrigued to know more. You know what? I'm going to get onto the forums and actually tell people. So watch out in future updates forums. I'll get on there. <laughs> okay, great. Keep your eyes out, uh, everybody. Um, next question is, what happened to King Valance? Uh, will we ever find out in a future quest or event? Uh, that's a good point. Um, king Valance, he, he's like, he's a strange one because he's really kind of foregrounded that there's quite obviously not a king here. Everybody talks about there not being king here. And he hasn't been for a long period of time. Um, again, we're not going to kind of active quest or story uh, piece of content that's going to go into it. Um, we do have an idea, not as quite set in stone as what we're going to do for like future gods, but we do have an idea of where he is. Um, I need the right story to kind of tack it onto. <laughs> as yeah. It, so yeah, um, kind of it's this space, I guess. Okay, uh, good stuff. Uh, next question is, who destroyed the bridge to the observatory? Why did they do it? And when will we be able to fix it? Oh my gosh. Um, these are really good questions. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I, I, I've got ideas, but they are my ideas, and they're not the kind of the curator of the content. My, my, my feeling was that, I mean, I thought the area was run down because of the nearby goblins, so um, my feeling would be it would also be the goblins, but that's, I mean, that's just conjecture, I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, next question is, uh, not sure how much information you're both provide on this one. It says... Will the new skills have lore to them in a similar way to Dungeoneering? Uh, yes and no. Uh, so it will have lore. It will have, they will they will be tied into the kind of the theme of the sixth age, mm -hmm. but in the same way as uh, Dungeoneering was. So I mean, people are aware that there are two skills that we are planning. The first will be kind of tied. It's, it's almost like the first skill is following on from the World Wakes. So the the events of the World Wakes will lead to the kind of the theme and what you are doing in skill one mm -hmm. so um I, I don't want to give too much away i do apologize but that, that, that oh, yeah. sort of um this first skill will follow on directly from the law and we're very much trying to with all of our kind of future gameplay content tie it into the sick day tie it into the law so that everything feels like it's embedded in this universe rather than just feeling a bit cast away and floaty like plan said i guess Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, this is our first attempt to do it with a, a skill from, like, you know, from the very base foundations. Mm -hmm. um, so skill one will be doing that. What skill two is doing is actually taking that a, a step further. Um, certainly the plan as it stands, I mean, obviously this may change, is that, um, is that story is kind of integral to skill two. Right. And with the notion that um, as I am progressing in the skill, I am also progressing in a story and that there is some connection um, and maybe I'm hitting milestones within that skill that unlock more story is something we we'll explore with skill two. I don't know how far I will go along that road because obviously there's some expense attached. I mean, quests and, and story-based content are cheap, particularly. But that's really where we want to go. It's almost kind of wrapping them around like a helix. Like, so as you progress in the skill, you get more stories. You progress in the story, you get more in the skill. And really, um, as you become better in the skill, you also become, you know, you get more kind of, it, 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 it's represented in the content. Um, it's really what I want to do with it, and what um, certainly Mod Mar has been touting about the content. I mean, but the question, as with everything, is um, we have big ideas at the start. It's whether those get featured in. <laughs> so I'm hoping this won't go the way of the lizard men and the fossil island. Um, mm -hmm. This is something we <laughs> do, and um, I see it as a positive. I, I, I think that uh, one of the things you miss with a skill is it feels like you know. You become a story player when you're playing story, but you have to switch modes, and then you become a quest player, a, a skill player when you're doing a skill. So it's kind of trying yeah. to merge those a little bit more together. We'll see, that but not in an intrusive way, not in a way that I am, you know, I'm suddenly hit with obstacles of story to leapfrog over before I can get to any skill content. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's interesting to know. Definitely. Um, next one is: uh, Will more information about the uh, or about manifest real? be revealed soon um, are there any plans in development for the future regarding them uh, with so I think if you put Menaphos and um, Prithinus in front of uh, the player, players you would probably pick Prithinus mm -hmm. and Menaphos so the, the, the notion of going into Menaphos exploring and finding out more about Menaphites um, and, uh, and Sophenum and how they work together and just exploring that area more I think there are places that we'd rather go but saying that, the notion of um, what the Menophytes have been up to, what their aim is, mm -hmm. 
Um, you've got a little hint of that in the Ozan quest. I don't know if you remember, there's, um, you talked to the, the ambassador is featured in it, who's working with, sorry to reveal spoilers for the second quest in the Ozan series, uh, is working with Amiska in some way. And yeah. they're to get back, they're the carried in. Um, and this is a big plot that we're going to explore more with, because um, the Desert Quest is very much an active concern. It's not going to be a few quests, but very much an active concern. And yeah. the way I see the Desert Quest is almost like a microcosm of what the Sixth Age. You've got a number of gods, or in this case, kind of demigods or kind of uh, fractions of gods, that kind of trying to, almost fighting each other and, uh, for, for an overall goal and a kind of dominance of the desert. So I really feel that they're, they're very sixth age, weirdly. It's almost kind of a small element of the sixth age. <clears throat> so I really want to do more with the desert, and the Ozan quests were really a kind of signal to all of you that we are intending to do more with the desert quests, that there are more stories that we'd like to tell. I mean, if you know your desert content, you know Chumakin's dream, that Chumakin is split into all of these, into these different pieces. You've got, so you've got have got Scabarus, things like that. We've already done a quest that is revolves around applicant you know evil um yeah. but we haven't done one around het we haven't done one around crondis um and these are things that we could do and where they would i don't know where they would fit necessarily in the kind of the the, the, the quest line whether or not they would come actually in a lower stage you know at an earlier stage in, the, in it so that it wouldn't be you now they might come before you know evil rather than rather than after it but we want to have that sense that you could play through the desert content in you know um without having to spend hundreds of hours leveling up so yeah. it's, it's kind of seamless flow through all of the desert yeah. content to reach this kind of crescendo this um this combination of that desert content which is something that i see as an active concern absolutely yeah. and ozan will be featured really heavily and i see him as the kind of desert signature hero if you know your signature hero yeah ozan definitely yeah <laughs> um, uh okay good stuff uh, next question is um you mentioned in your Reddit QA that there are eight Guardians of Guthix, but so far we have met five. Who are the remaining three? Five. Okay, now I'm counting through. Wait a minute. <laughs> um, Fiora, Fiora, um, Juna, Bluta, Death. Um, see, this is interesting. So you've got five. Um, I would add... So you've got Krez as well from the World Wakes. Mm-hmm. Um, you've also got the player. So I'd actually argue there's probably six. Um, I made the mistake of saying that Keldar may have been a guardian of Guthics, which is wrong, <laughs> by the way. Uh, <laughs> to clear that up now, uh, talking to Montana, that um, Keldar is definitely not a guardian of Guthics. But the notion of eight uh, is exactly what I've got noted in my content. I can't remember actually saying that, so I must have been drunk, obviously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have a guardian of Guthics coming up in a piece of content that's coming out relatively soon, actually. Right. Um, there's one Guardian of Guthics that will be explored in a non-quest piece of content. Um, which leaves us only one, not much wiggle room, really. Uh, <laughs> so we will talk about them in the future, but um, I don't want to go overboard with Guardians of Guthics. What I like about the Guardians most is that they each have a very definite purpose that serves Guthics. So, for example, Uta is almost kind of guarding the integrity of the, you know, the, the membrane around the world, making, you know, in collaboration with the Void Knights, kind of making sure it breaks into this world. Juna guards the, the Tears, which is a very powerful um, remnant of the Stone of Jazz. You've got um, Fiara, who does something similar with the Fist of Gothic. So I like that they each have a purpose. So yeah. I just introduce them willy-nilly, because they have to do something that Gothics would have needed while he was away, as it were, you know, these proper guardians. Just as the, the player is a new guardian, just because there's a new threat, the possibility of gods coming back, we need to have a guardian to protect the innocents from those gods. And so, um, it's, it's actually been difficult trying to make sure that the, the future guardians that we produce have a very definite role in a kind of Guthicsian sense. Something contributes to the balance and harmony of the world. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, yeah, so you've got one coming up soon. He's... Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> can't reveal too much, but you probably... <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool. Um, really like him. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thing. He's very visual. Um, and <laughs> he's got a great accessory. Uh, I great. That's that's pretty. That's kind of enigmatic, isn't it? Sorry. <laughs> he has a cracking accessory that I think you'll appreciate. Uh huh. Okay. Great stuff. What we're going to do now is take a short break um, whilst we collect some more questions. So stay tuned, everybody. Uh, we'll be back in five ten minutes. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back. Uh, we're here with Modosborn on Room Radio Live. Uh, make sure you're 
sending you all your requests through the shout out box um, and we're going to jump straight back in with the questions for uh, for Osborne so um, next question is uh, is there any law for the mysterious Leviathan mentioned in multiple occasions in the game or is it all just miscitings of the eastern land sea monsters uh, we, we, we haven't helped ourselves by constantly uh, introducing sea monsters <laughs> so I think what the Leviathan was is probably got a bit lost um, so the Leviathan I, I see very much attached to, I think it's Gentleman Mallard within the pirate class. Right. And um, the sightings of that he gave. And, and I, I really do feel that we have intentions for the Leviathan, and that is very much part of the pirate content. Mm -hmm. so, um, the kind of the pirates' names and dwarves um, face off, as it were, that's yeah. happening at the moment. Um, if pirates were to win, I would imagine that would feature a little bit within it. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, the problem that we got ourselves into is we introduced Mermaids, the Lassus, um, player own ports, which has a number of sea monsters. You've got Temple yeah. Breaking that has uh, some kind of sea monster within it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very hard to tell what we were intending. <laughs> so right. it's, uh, the Leviathan is very much a thing, but it's right. kind of a pirate thing. So mm -hmm. it's, it's distinct from me, for me, I'd say. Okay, okay. please it up. <laughs> Um, the next question is, uh, will we ever have the ability to use the power of the Shadow Realm ourselves? Uh, well, I, I couldn't possibly say. Um, the the Slisk is, as you'd probably be unsurprised to hear, is going to be a feature more and more as we go with our stories. Um, and I, the way I see Slisk is being a master, if not the master, of the Shadow Realm. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Shadow Realm is going to play a bigger part. Uh, that is undoubtedly um, and what he's been doing a lot of his kind of clandestine plans um, even the staff of Armdale for example and how he got it is going to involve a lot, involve a lot of the Shadow Realm so um, I would be highly surprised if we didn't explore the Shadow Realm a little bit more right. uh, it's been a little bit hazy so far <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not something we've explored particularly um, it's certainly with the kind of the general shadow content uh, it was it was largely to do with Zaros' curse. You know, yeah, those who betrayed him got thrown into the Shadow Realm. But we got rules beyond that about what what goes into the Shadow Realm, uh, and so we've got room for stories within that. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, next up is: Can you elaborate on the Fremnic Province and how, to what extent, it was influenced by the old Norse myths and legends that exist in real life? Uh, initially. Uh, hugely. Um, obviously, you've got um, Valhalla. Mm -hmm. uh, you have, um, oh gosh, now we're going back. Um, the Kendall, for example. I mean, there's, there's a lot of touchstones to existing Scandi Scandinavian Nordic myth. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm hoping to do in the future is slightly, I'm hoping that the response to this is okay, but the, the notion of slightly detaching from that. The, the idea that the desert content shouldn't be purely Egyptian. We started off with a lot of pyramids, for example, and um, Ixlarin was very much like An Anubis and that sort of thing. Um, and the, the, the danger there is that it becomes almost... Um, if it feels like Earth, for one, it feels derivative. Yeah. Um, and there's... I really want to make it kind of uh, a RuneScape's riff on it, do interesting things. And now I think we've done that very successfully with the desert. Yeah. Uh, that you look at the desert content, you think of Tumican's Dream, you think of all of the um, cat-oriented content there, and I think successfully it's kind of moved slightly away from the Egyptian mythology. Yeah, yeah. It's something that is, is uh, that that is its own, and I think Ozan, the Ozan Quest really did that well. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to do something similar with Re uh, Relica and the Fremenic, really kind of make it so not so it doesn't feel like you're going into you know like Disneyland. I'm off in Viking land now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Off into uh, vampire world. But they. There, there, there really is something distinct, very RuneScape about each of these, and it's about um, telling stories, like with the elves, for example. You could say, oh, they're very Tolkien-esque, you know, they keep to themselves, they're very insular, they're, they're noble, and it's about telling stories that are different, um, about people that make us slightly more distinct, and um, yeah, that's a very roundabout way of saying Republic <laughs> <laughs> and Relica. Uh, yeah, the, the, originally, there were a number of touchstones, even the Nordic script that's in there, Mm -hmm. uh, but I think you'll see fewer of those. We'll be exploring more kind of um, directions that are individual to us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, interesting to know. Um, next question is, is Tusker a familiar god or one we haven't encountered before? Familiar god. See, familiar god can mean one of two things, I guess. <laughs> so um, that means a god of familiars or a god that is familiar to us. So first of all, it's not, uh, not at all. Tusker 
who is she is um is not a god of familiars by any means i know she's quite bestial is very much uh, like a creature mm -hmm. a, a beast of the woods as it were but um not a god of familiars um and she's only familiar in the sense that the world wakes flashback so when you go into the naragi home world um you see this kind of dead purplish creature um, this was one of the followers of Tusker, so it's kind of it was only keyed in and seeded through the world wake. So she's not familiar. She's only been familiar to people over the past like three, four months. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we want to do more with her. <laughs> yeah. As um, quite clear because we're kind of ramping up. You've got the world waits. You have uh, tribute to Gothics, which had a number of memories that talked about Tusker. Yeah. Um, and there are stories we'd like to go into because Tusker, for me, as I've said. You know, previously in this podcast represents something very different mm -hmm. which is a god that is relatively mindless there's no reason that a god should be an intellectual superior to a mortal yeah. and it's very much an in the opposite of that so this is somebody who crashes from world to world mm -hmm. it's just for some kind of compulsion some urge which is probably directed towards elder artifacts that sort of thing just barreling in there destroying mm -hmm. everything in her path and what I also really like is rather than followers, you have almost this kind of symbiotic relationship. You've got a race that are following her simply because she destroys. Yeah. What she destroys is something they can ransack, they can pillage. That's really quite interesting to me because that's very much kind of taking parallels from the, you know, the animal world. Yeah. Carrion creatures, vultures, but also parasitic creatures that, you know, these fish that kind of nip at the food on the gills of bigger creatures, that sort of thing. Um, and um, one developer in particular is kind of grasped hold of this story and has, has presented one just out, outside of work, extra curriculum. Mm. And it's just suggested a story that is absolutely fantastic and it's really yeah. cool. um, And I'd love to do that. So it's just about finding the time to do it. Okay. Uh, great stuff. Uh, an interesting question here. Um, quite relevant as well, quite recent. It says, can you explain further what you meant about the pirate, gnome and dwarf quest mentioned in the bonus BTS? It sounds like just one quest with all three and I'd love to know if this is the case or not. Um, I certainly want to make that clear. These are three distinct quests. Uh, apologies if that isn't clear to people. I mean, we really want you to check out these videos and um, apply your views to the one that you really want to win. Um, so that, I mean, it's very much like the guaranteed content polls of old, if you remember those. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, whereby, genuinely, the winner of this will be made into a piece of content. This is the biggest guaranteed content poll effectively that we've ever done. We've never done a, a quest that is, no, a finishing quest for a series, series that's done by this. Mm. And, and, and the hope is that once the poll is finished, that we kind of really make it transparent, the kind of the development of this. And we talk to you guys on the forums, get your input, maybe get your ideas, we'll be naming things, maybe even putting players in the quest. Oh, well. That sort of thing. It yeah. means that it's really kind of a quest that is, you're invested in, you're really excited about what's going to happen with it. Mm -hmm. Um, I would encourage you all to vote. <laughs> Please do. Um, uh, really like to get those votes up to make sure that the you know the, the quest that represents what what you guys really want wins. Mm -hmm. So do have a look at that. I mean, with the dwarves, we've got a really kind of interesting one that's uh, about you know, kind of combat oriented, about taking down the red axe, taking down those in, those individuals. You know, Grimson, Trimed, Arundar, um, and we're kind of taking it to the red axe. You've got the the gnomes, which <laughs> the gnomeception is around the top, which I really like. It's about dispelling the illusions that uh, Gluffery has set up and seeing what was really behind it, because a lot of things in RuneScape may not be what they seem. It's about taking that down. Mm -hmm. So that, that interests me as well. And the pirates, I mean, who doesn't like pirates? The pirates, <laughs> what I love about it is um, the proposal that I've been sent. It's this big, bawdy, laugh, laugh out loud experience that kind of draws together, like a bit like some of the Penguin Quests have in the past, draws together a number of um, story strands from other areas say the monkey quests perhaps others and it kind of pulls it all together for a big kind of cataclysmic uh everybody take down rabbit jack uh finale right so um i'm excited about all three so they'll all be great no matter which <laughs> i'd really like people to get involved and get yeah, definitely uh -huh. okay cool well we'll put the uh we'll get the video uh, in the chat box below so if you haven't already checked it out check out the chat box and take a look there i think the the videos are quite good full of um of puns from all sides so. yeah. I think that's very rich tape, isn't it? It's, it's, I think eventually we will knock the uh, knock that little tail off the arm on RuneScape and make it a uh, punscape or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, uh, next question is, uh, you mentioned in the lore campfire that there's a god who has names on the RuneScape map but has not been mentioned in more detail. Who is this god? You want more information? Oh my. Um, <laughs> so um, when we were talking about 
the Fremenic and uh, Kramgen gods, mm -hmm. so yeah. we, and whether or not we bring into those. I could probably, I, I think it would be okay to say that it's one of those two. Right. But, okay. uh, as uh, it's featured on the world map, so if you looked at the world map now, you would see um, this god's name there. And as I was saying before, they'll be very core to a future storyline. Right. Uh, so that it's a little bit more, <laughs> an extra piece in a puzzle that is yeah. probably too much but at least you know it gives you something to go on I, I, I used to write um, the Chaos Elemental notice board and um, oh, letter, yeah. or the post back from the hedge and these were always very kind of cryptic puzzles for you guys to figure out and there was no there was nothing more joyful than watching the future updates forum as people <laughs> so I'm afraid this is slightly me just having fun <laughs> <laughs> okay um, uh, next question is uh, it, it was once stated that during one point there were over 20 gods in Gilanor, but nowadays the number has decreased notably. What happened to these missing gods? I'd love to know where that 20 comes from. <laughs> I really... <laughs> I don't know where that's from. Um, certainly, I mean, in a sense, there's an element of truth to it, in that um, there are not many gods. Mm -hmm. are kind of portrayed in this game. I mentioned lots of places. Your Saradonians, your Armadillas, your Bandosses, your Mirimbos. Yeah. Um, and peripheral gods, there are very few of those who are just kind of reference kind of like we were talking about the Kramjan gods and the Fremenic gods, um, and that makes nowhere near twenty. I mean, I've I've done the, the tiers, I've done the hierarchy. I know how many gods we've mentioned in, in the past, mm -hmm. but that twenty, that number, sounds about right to me. I, I, it's certainly in terms of how many gods I'd like to explore in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, might feature in future content, perhaps slightly lower than that. Um, but that, that, that sounds like a good number. I think that any more than that, I think people would get get a little bit frustrated with it. And I know how I felt when I was watching Heroes Series 3, 4 and 5 with you know, all these ridiculous <laughs> heroes and, and, and people are coming back from the dead all over the place. And it's yeah. about some kind of integrity and making sure that uh, people don't feel like they're coming in willy-nilly. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, makes sense. Um, next question is, uh, is the Majorat creator God and Elder God? So yeah, I mentioned this a little bit earlier in the, um, the podcast, but um, it's somebody that we're really kind of interested in because there's obviously I do see this person as this god as an elder god, absolutely, really do. Um, Matt said before, to be an elder god, you have to create life. Uh, you yeah. would create life, and that's that's what sets you apart. So for the friend of Skate creator god, would have to be an elder god. Um, I have no problems with mentioning that, but there's. What interests me is that the Elder God, <laughs> um, to paraphrase Jurassic Park, they move in herds. Yeah. Do move together and they're creating uh -huh. um, together. So what has separated this God from all the rest? Mm. And Freneske is very... It's, it's a turbulent world. I mean, it, it, there's, you know, it, it's, it feels like it's going to come apart at the seams. And obviously you have the Madrat there who are very evil. Mm -hmm. And this creates an interesting scenario. What is an Elder God doing there? Why... Are there the magi there who are potentially being created, created directly by the old gods? And I know if you think most of the other life has come through what we consider to be evolution, I would guess. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so what is what has happened there? And that's something. I mean, that's a big topic for way into the future. But um, that I find that hugely interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, next question is: Will you be releasing more novice or experienced free-to-play quests in the near future? Uh, the plan is yes. I mean, currently the plan is that uh, there will be a free-to-play novice quest uh, this year. There will be. Okay. I don't think there will be any surprise that um, I mean, we've done Osan, we've done Ariane. Is that a natural? There is a uh, quest that comes after that. So that's yeah. that's the, that's the one we're really exploring at the moment. And the current plan is to have that free-to-play and novice. Um, so I'm hoping that people are still ex excited about that. We're very much following the pattern of Ariane and Ozan, in which there's still something to experience for those high levels, even Grandmaster level. There is still something that you can really kind of get your teeth into. Mm -hmm. So yeah. feel like you've just, you know, you've just kind of spam clicked through chat to get to an end experience. Really don't want that. And it's, um, it's of, of, of just playing it this morning, in fact, and um, in the, the, the kind of state that it is. And even now you can see that it's going to be of a similar quality, if not better, than those other quests, the Ozan and Arian quests. It's very immersive, very character -driven. Right. I'm really excited about it. Okay, sounds great. So, uh, three players got to look forward to um, in terms of quests. Uh, next up is, it was, it was once mentioned the Black Knight's Fortress will receive a graphical update. Will this be in the near future? Oh, it's like I almost planned it. This follows on directly from the last quest. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, 
With Ariane, we re we made Rune Mysteries, which was very uh, originally quite a kind of uh, a talk heavy quest, a little bit of a fetch quest. Mm -hmm. And so the intention was to kind of uh, override that and create something that was slightly more immersive, uh, a slightly stronger quest. And I hope we did that. And so also, also Ozan did that with Prince Ali Rescue. Um, with uh, the future, uh, this other quest I've been talking about, the notion of attacking Black Knight Fortress comes up. Mm -hmm. uh, it will involve Black Knight Fortress rework. We are looking right. at um, removing Black Knight's Fortress quest. So it will be reworked, and this will take the place of Black Knight's Fortress the Quest. I feel that that is a strong decision, because there are a number of things that are slightly irregular about the original quest. The notion of going after a cabbage, for example. <laughs> yeah. That's very escapey, but it can be off the team. Mm -hmm. Slightly strange. And um, we're going to put in lots of Easter eggs for those people who love the original. So, And it will very much kind of feel like a a reimagining as the yeah. uh, people in movies like to call it of of the original so um there'll be so many nods and people will feel really kind of at home with the content but the intention is to rework black knight's fortress and my gosh it is massive we had to completely change the environment the, the environment to get this 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 um area in there but there's right. something to interact with in that area as well which is quite cool mm -hmm. um, so yes you'll be seeing a rework of black knight's fortress okay sounds great uh next question is quite short to the point will there be another spellbook released in the future well um so spellbooks are largely kind of um affiliated with gods mm -hmm. um so i think the majority of people would probably say the normal spellbook is Ceridominus, your ancient spellbook associated with zeros mm -hmm. um so uh with more gods potentially kind of finding their way into runescape and however that happens mm -hmm. there's a possibility that we could do more spellbooks absolutely um, what is nice is that um, we've made a great deal of effort and what I'd like to talk about in the future and I'll probably put up on the, the website is that each god represents something a different philosophy and a very mm -hmm. different kind of play style different kind of player everything so Bandos will be very kind of combat oriented things like that mm -hmm. so because they're so distinct the notion of spell books that are also distinct kind of comes up and I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if another spell book happened but we don't have that as, as I say as I, you, my mantra it's not an active concern at the moment mm -hmm. um, but I would love to do it Okay, um, next question is, if Sliss becomes a god, uh, will his grip on the Shade Realm be affected? Uh, yeah, um, obviously it's still very much up in the air. I mean, the, what, there's only one person in uh, the universe, the RuneScape universe, who knows whether Slisk is a god, and that's Slisk himself, as you'd be unsurprised to hear. And yeah. he's not going to tell anyone, um, <laughs> frankly. Um, he's <clears throat> He's got plans. And uh, those plans will involve the Shadow Realm. And there is no doubting that even if he is not a god, he is increased in power. So um, because he is the master, as I see it, the master of the Shadow Realm, his grip on the Shadow Realm will increase. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be interesting. If we ever did some Zerosian content for the future, for example, mm -hmm. Zeros is very much associated with the Shadow Realm as well. Yeah. The relationship between Zeros and Silesk, whether or not Silesk is still a, uh, a Zerosian, for example, mm -hmm. that's quite interesting. Uh, yeah. I think I think that that conflict or or how they're working together you will be a, a real core theme. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, good to know. Uh, leading on from that, um, how great can the power of the Shade Realm be? Oh my! What questions on the Shadow Realm? Um, so <laughs> I, I, there is a danger, along with a lot, a lot of the kind of god magics, which is why we're trying to kind of create a hierarchy and getting a notion of what, what gods can do. Mm. is you don't want to get into a situation where people can teleport wherever they want, where they've got um, li unlimited power. I mean, it undermines what you're doing in a quest. If, you know, if, if you're travelling through a dungeon and somebody could have just teleported to the, the end point quite easily through the Shadow Realm or through some kind of god powers. So it's about um, making sure there's limits. Mm -hmm. And the Shadow Realm is, yeah, very much part of that. I don't want Sliss to be able to quite easily move in and out of every location we're going to apply some rules to that mm -hmm. um so that he can't be everywhere at once <laughs> omnipotent um so yeah i do want to create flaws uh in these characters and we're, we're we've mapped those out mm -hmm. okay uh great and our final question as it is uh, just turned uh, six o'clock is uh will there be any expansion to the elemental workshop quest series this year and if so what goodies can we expect to come with that I love the Elemental Workshop series. I, I, aside from probably number three, that's killed me several times. <laughs> I'll do that puzzle. Um, okay, so uh, the developer of the Elemental Workshop series is, is, is with us. I mean, if you consider how far 
the Animator Workshop series has gone back. I mean, mm. he's the old guard. He's been with us for so long. Right. And um, it really would be, I, I, I would feel bad. I, I just couldn't give it to anybody else. It would have to be him. <laughs> um, and, I mean, he's he's so technical. He's fantastic at creating puzzles. He's, mm. he, he's like a walking Rubik's Cube. <laughs> so he's somebody that I would love to kind of work on that next quest. Obviously, he's very much up to our lead designer about what quests come out. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's about finding time for him, really. Uh, just gives you an insight into how we work as a company because he, he's working on big projects and those big projects. Are, he's been working on the TLI, for example, which you've seen betas for the top level sure. interface or the interface changes that we're doing. Yeah. Um, and so you can imagine he's very busy. Mm. The notion of getting a little quest out of him, I, I'd feel quite rude walking over to the top level interface guys and going, "Do you mind if I get a quest out of this guy?" Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'd love to do one. And he had only got plans, and um, absolutely, it's, we're talking about the, the the different rune types, and there is an endpoint to it, and it's 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 good fun, and I think that will really come out. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, that's uh, that's it. Thank you so much, uh, Modern Form, for joining uh, me today live on Rune Radio. Uh, absolute pleasure. Um, Thank you for letting me talk your ear off. <laughs> no, no problem at all. I mean, uh, the kind of feedback we're getting through at the moment uh, and live throughout the show was. Fantastic! So uh, everyone seems really, really pleased with this. Um, oh. <laughs> well, I've been uh, DJ Nathan uh, live on radio with Mod Osborne. Um, this uh, show will be uploaded onto YouTube and sent over to to Jagged. So if your friends have missed out or you want to listen to over uh, listen over some of the answers again, then you'd be more than welcome to do so uh, later on this evening. Um, and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, that's it from us. So uh, take care, everybody.